Um, so the point of this today, I'm going to go ahead and get right to it, um, was to go online, do a PSA on showing you guys kind of how to register EOS tokens. So if you have this video right now is targeted for if you are an ES, EOS holder of tokens and you do not hold those in something like Exodus wallet and you have not registered, let's say you're in your Jax wallet, like you've done Shapeshift, you got some EOS tokens or you went out and bought them on Kraken or one of the exchanges, you want to move those over to a uh, wallet such as like Exodus. Exodus has made it super simple and easy to register them. Um, and you want to make sure that your tokens are registered. And I'm going to show you guys the smart contract from the EOS crowd cell down to the code level and why this is important because they can freeze the funds after the date as part of the executing code of the smart contract on the ERC-20 contract that was originally created for EOS. So their whole concept was that they were going to issue it out on Ethereum under an ERC-20 token, and then they have the ability to freeze essentially the tokens of where they're at um, as a kind of burn feature to move the tokens um, over to the main net through either a snapshot i don't think they've actually displayed or gave a very detailed at least to a code level of how they're going to do this short of taking a snapshot of where the tokens sit on registered addresses and then do a like for like uh essentially pump into the new main net for eos um under you know a, a new address uh presumably obviously um, that you would then have contracts swapped over and then all the locations like the wallets that you're registering with then presumably believe would be that linkage that's created to then credit your particular wallet with the inbound of what you have registered so um, I'll write up a, a little picture of how mechanically I think that is going to work they have not published for my understanding exactly how it's going to work but bottom line the the information we do know is that you have to register them to be included why are they making this so confusing so i don't i think it's actually really simple it's just crypto in general is confusing sometimes so essentially you got a token on one platform they want to give you the equal amount on the other platform and this is the mechanism you need to do to to get registered for that activity um it would have been a lot easier if they just did a functional swap but i think the problem is is they have to force everybody to register and you have to have your tokens at the time so you have um from my understanding and somebody could correct me the exchanges are not doing this for us um some exchanges do during like hard forks and stuff like that they do a like for like um, if you have an account in an exchange and then in that exchange, let's say Binance, you have EOS tokens and Binance might be doing it. I don't know. I need to look in Binance. I just know the, what, what we need to do for ourselves and what we have control of is moving your EOS over to something like Exodus, then registering it. And that's what we're going to do right now today. I'm going to download the Exodus. I'm going to show you how to do it if you have tokens. So that's what we're going to get to into right now. This, I already had the code up for... I brought up a couple things today in here. This is the smart contract code. And we're going to get down into the source code. I'm going to actually take you guys through kind of the line uh, that allows them to control uh, what goes on with your EOS um, at a wallet level. Inside the smart contract, it's kind of midway down. This this is the smart contract. We'll go through the smart contract um, specifically here in a second. But right now, if you own, if you own EOS... And it's not in Exodus. And what I mean by Exodus is, pull this over, exodus.io. And there's I, there's a few other places that you can use registered, but Exodus is the one I'm using. Um, they have a big uh, urgent here too for EOS registration. You download that, Windows. This is just gonna be a fresh copy on this computer. And I'm gonna show you guys where to go to do that. Once you download it and run it, it's going to install. Made a shortcut. I'm going to leave this down here. Here's the Exodus piece. I'm going to launch it. 
So we're just downloading the Windows version. Here's Exodus. Comes with a basic set of uh, wallets that are already ready to go. Um, under wallets, you just kind of make sure. Yep, it's even got a warning there. You got to make sure that EOS has been added. So under settings, you want to come down here and you want to make sure your EOS is checked. So just check that guy there. And I don't know if you have to apply or anything on this. Let's see here. Nope. This is other Ethereum assets. So EOS should be checked. Wallets, EOS right here. So if there's EOS in here, what's going to happen is, is it's going to say you can send your EOS. So like if you have a Jax wallet, you're going to take the Jax wallet and you're going to send, you're going to hit the receive. Now this is just one that I have, this thing I just downloaded. So if this was my address, I would take my Jax on my phone and I would go to the EOS that's on there. And rem remember, you have to have a little bit of Ethereum in your Jax wallet or whatever wallet you have. Um, that you're moving over to this, you're going to have to move a little bit of Ethereum, like 0.01 um, uh, Ethereum, right? So just, uh, you know, $5 or so. Or $5 would be 0 0.05 right now at the current rate. So 0 .0, 0 0.05 is about 5 bucks on Ethereum. This only takes, I don't know, a couple cents to uh, handle, but just send yourself a little bit of Ethereum and then send all of your EOS over to Exodus um, if you're trying to register it. Now you can do some research and figure out other places that you can register. This is just an example of where you can register using the Exodus wallet. So once your EOS comes into your, your address, don't send your EOS to this address. That would be sending it to me. Um, you want to send it to your own. You want to download Exodus and then... Um, do the receive address when it comes in here it's going to pop up and say hey this address is not registered just like this one says right here and what that's going to do is this little url fires up their kind of uh, demo of how to do the registration process now they've made it super easy this is like the easiest tutorial in the free world right now so essentially what that little tutorial is going to tell you once your eos pops up here and this is why you need a little bit of Ethereum when you go to submit, when you go to do this contract here. You're going to have EOS and then you're going to have a little bit of Ethereum in this wallet. Then you're going to come over to help. You're going to scroll down and then register my EOS address. This little green button here will register that address. If I submitted Ethereum right now to this wallet, it would actually register this EOS address. I think you might need a little bit of EOS in here too, but when you click that button, it's going to sit there. It's going to come back and it's going to say this address is registered. That's all you need to do. And the basic premise is once that's done, then you will have it linked to where when EOS's main net comes up and you get your swap over, you're good to go. So that's all there is to it, folks. I mean, it's like the simplest thing. I mean, I, know I did a whole life. This whole life stream is a lot of words just to tell you to go click green button. But that registers your EOS. So I've had a, several people call me this morning that have purchased EOS. And they're like, oh, God, what am I going to do? I keep seeing all this stuff. I need to register my EOS. It's in my Jax wallet. And I've had a few people have some issues, too, when it comes to sending out of the Jax wallet. And what happens is, is when you're sending out of your Jax wallet, if you have your phone, it doesn't matter if it's iOS or it doesn't matter if it's um, Android. But when you go to submit, if you get a transaction failed, there's a couple ways to fix that. Um, first off, anytime you do anything with like something like a Jack's wallet or a mobile wallet, make sure you have your private keys backed up or your, your seed that, so if you go into your settings under your wallets, uh, under your backup wallet, um, when you come in there, one of the options is you know, view your 12 word paraphrase. You want to copy that, write that down, keep it somewhere safe. Don't show anybody take a copy of that first very first it should be the very first thing you do when you have something like a phone wallet and if you don't ha have it married up with like a treasure or something you want to make sure you have that copied and and uh, and you actually can get to your coins if you ever lose your wallet or your phone or any of that kind of situation so you want to do that first if you're getting a transaction failed whenever you're trying to submit these first off make sure you have some ethereum in that jacks wallet because you're going to need that that's 
A lot of people, if Ethereum does nothing else in its life besides facilitate the transactions of a whole bunch of ERC-20 tokens, it's serving a purpose. Ethereum is the fuel that lets all these ERC-20 tokens move. That's why you always need a little bit of Ethereum to sit there and grease the skids to let it go, right? So if you're going to be submitting out of your any of your ERC-20 tokens, like Civic or EOS or any of those, you need a little bit of Ethereum to make it work. So... It will use 0 0.0005 and some change Ethereum, a very minuscule amount of Ethereum to facilitate the transaction and allow it broadcast on the Ethereum network. Because all of these transactions on the ERC-20 side is actually happening on Ethereum. And it's just a contract address that's underneath as an ERC-20 contract address. So it's kind of carrying it. Think of it like a train and a cargo, right? So that's essentially what's going on with it. So you want to have a little bit of Ethereum in there. So if you're getting a transaction filled, first off, make sure you have enough Ethereum. And then make sure that if you're still getting a transaction fell, come off of your Wi-Fi. If I've had some issues before trying to use Jack's wallet on the mobile phone, and when it comes up with a little red banner at the bottom, it says transaction failed. I've had a disable Wi-Fi, just let it hook to my phone network. And then I go to submit it and it worked. I've also had another phone where none of that worked and it was still giving me a transaction failed and it worked. Right. Like I sent it, it's a transaction fail, but it's still broadcasted to the network. But in the event that that does not happen, it's just giving you a transaction failed. Then there's a one other last resort that I've had work and it's allowed me to move um, money out of jacks every time, which is going under settings and tools and then reset your cash. Now, the resetting of the cash should not get rid of your funds. But this is the whole point of me telling you to make sure you back up your wallet because software does bad stuff sometimes and I don't want it to corrupt on you and then you lose your wallet whenever you're resetting your cash but all that's going to end up doing is going to dump that local database of all the activity that's happened and it's going to allow the wallet to reinitialize and then you should be good to go I would then try to send again just on your cell network and then you should be able to send your tokens without a problem so a lot of kind of pro tips on how to get your stuff out of Jax a lot of and the reason why I'm using Jax a lot is one I've always recommended Jax is I use it quite frequently just to be able to switch in and out using shapeshift which is pretty nice but if other people are having issues with jacks it's been known to have a lot of issues when you're trying to submit stuff and use shapeshift sometimes so if you're having issues with that most of the time it's usually the cash or it has something to do with not having enough ether or it's it's connect it's getting filtered out because whatever local internet connection you're on is filtering out that that call that request i don't know if it's rpc whatever it's using it might be using rpc but whatever call it's using is getting filtered out by the routers the actual source code and why and how this thing is and this is something you guys can't procrastinate if you own eos tokens right now and you haven't registered this what i'm about to show you the next thing is kind of like going to be one of those things like man i'm totally procrastinating i totally should have done that and you're going to totally not have your tokens potentially um because of this little function here so if we come in and this is this ether scan address on the ethereum network if we scroll up to the top of this this is the contract so this is a contract address it is the the co contract for eos crowd cell shows how much they have in this particular contract right now all the various transactions, almost a million transactions on this. Here's the code of this contract. 171 comments there. It's a nicely. So this is the detail source code of the contract. So people could review it before you know they wanted to commit to it. And if you scroll through this, most of the stuff is a lot of canned ERC20 token stuff. Copy and paste, go and execute, change a few digits. But then there's some custom stuff around 380, line 380 here that's right here so this function here allows a stoppable event on transfers so the function of transferring from addresses is stoppable which means essentially if you have an address with eos tokens on an erc20 token after a particular time period they can freeze that those tokens from moving so essentially ether scan and that and ether delta and all the different wallet addresses will not facilitate that transaction as it goes to read through that source code and sees that there's a stop on it um so it's not that they can take your tokens away from you they can just stop them from moving so i want to make sure that there's a real clear and concise understanding of the difference here it's equivalent to 
I want to move the rail car on rails that are not mine. I can, I am a, a user of a rail network, but I own my own train car with my contents in it. When I go to execute the movement of that train car across those tracks, which is Ethereum, it's going to read through this, this code and it's going to see that the tr me moving my car can be stopped. So it's not that they're necessarily taking your funds from you. They're not taking the rail car and the contents in your rail car. They're just stopping your ability to move it or exchange it. So that's the clear difference um, on this smart contract is that this is essentially your multi-pass to move the stuff. And if uh, based on their discretion, they had the ability to stop this as part of the, right, the written content here um, on this smart contract on this particular token. In the beginning, I know that they had used words like burn the token or do whatever, but in reality, but in looking at the code, it's just like they can stop it um, from moving, which is effectively kind of the same thing. And then we're going to go into one other thing I wanted to show. One of the things that I'm going to be reviewing here in the next few days is this piece of equipment. I had been asked about going to this event out in uh, Germany, which I'm not going to be able to make, but... This piece of equipment is from this company, RebTech, and they've reached out and are sending me one of each of these to do a review and test on. And since it's a GPU, I said yes. I'm very intrigued on this piece here. So what this is, this is a this is the footprint of a GPU. So think about that. It's the footprint of about a, about a little over a 1080 Ti, pretty decent sized 1080 Ti. But it is a AMD A6, 4 gigs of memory, 120 gigs SATA, and 8 times USB PCIe mining board. All in one, one board. Just all hard-coded in there. And it's powered by a single 6-pin. So there's no ATX plug-in in this. And it's the footprint of a GPU.